Welcome to the ProBrick exclusive YouTube channel with Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist. Um, how to handle suicide threats, serious or manipulative. I've seen, been involved way back in the ministry where you'd see these families going at it for years, frigassing around and mucking around and, you know, it turns into a... Uh, like a tree of life, <laughs> even though it's threats of death. Um, in some cases, it's not the person that's uh, threatening suicide that's going to do it. It can be, in some cases, the parent decides to do it because they've driven these people round the bend. But it's so easy to handle. Let's have a listen to what's going to happen here. Welcome to yet another Bippy is on a cigarette break and talking about crazy bitches uh, video. And I wanted to talk today about, oh gosh, it's really windy. I hope it doesn't pick up too bad on the mic. Um, I wanted to talk about suicide and uh, suicide attempts. So uh, um, sometimes people will threaten suicide as a manipulation attempt and sometimes they're serious about it. So here's what you do either way. Call 911, get them placed on a 72 hour psych hold. You are not a clinically trained suicide uh, prevention therapist. So if somebody is legitimately suicidal, that's who they need to help them. And if you are a clinically trained suicide prevention specialist, then you should damn well know that you do not treat your own family or anybody that you're close to. So you're not. Well, now we're getting down to the meat and potatoes, aren't we? If somebody's commit well, threatening to commit suicide in the family, it's really none of your business, to be honest, in terms of dealing with it. You should be calling for professional help. And if you're not doing that, you're negligent. You really are. You're just deliberately being neg negligent and there's more going on in this than what's on the surface. Not the person the pr to, to deal with this shit. This is not something that friends and family helps with. You need fucking professional help if somebody is threatening to yep. kill themselves. You know, I've seen these mothers and you yeah, mainly the mothers freaking fluff around with this sh You know what? A lot of it's covert emotional incest and they're using manipulation to get a charge up on their emotional feed off the parent. The parents um, getting their little buzz out of it all. This is one aspect of it. But the easiest way to fix it is get on the phone. If you're fair income about it, get on the phone. If you're not, play your games and um, dilly-dally around with each other. Stroke each other's um, feeling sorry for yourselves and all this crap and rubbish. I mean, there's so much, again, evil out there that goes on um, and they become so self-centred and self-sympathetic and they're all feeding into it, and it's just a, oh, it's horrible. This woman's on it. If it's a manipulation attempt, being placed on a 72-hour psych hold will usually stop them from ever doing that again as a manipulation attempt. Absolute now here's, 100%. So, so either way, this is, this is what you do if somebody calls and they say they're suicidal. Now, um, sometimes... Um, you know, people with personality disorders, uh, uh, manipulative people, they tend to be super fucked up. Uh, yeah. So I want to make sure that something is really, really clear. If you do have somebody who is uh, suicidal and threatens suicide if they don't get their way and then they kill themselves. For the Just No Mail crowd, I'm thinking about um, poor hedgehogs don't share and her batshit insane mother-in-law who killed herself and she found her because um, they weren't allowing her to have access to the kid. So. Here's the thing, um, if you look at the brain of someone who dies in an accident versus the brain of someone who commits suicide, they're structurally different. Uh, the dendrite, there are way more dendrites in the uh, brain of somebody who's committed suicide. There are structural differences and those things either take years to show up or they're just already there. You did not do anything to make your um, abuser commit suicide if somebody is suicidally and inclined just let me say this too did you hear the key word if you're at home and somebody's got this idea that you all need to tiptoe around them because they might commit suicide 
That's abuse. And it's not just a small abuse. It's dark triad abuse. It's, <laughs> it's a, such a deep form of self-centeredness thrown at the people around them to draw for attention. It's, look to me, I, I don't care what the professionals say, it's a dark, reverse dark triad form of draining emotional supply out of the people in the house. And some of these rescuers, parents, get emotional supply from the person wanting to commit suicide. Because again, as I've said, it gives them a sense of being needed, it gives them a sense of thinking that this person ain't going to go anywhere and I won't be left on my own. There's a whole host of dark um, thinking going on underneath it all. But this woman's so good, just fix the problem. A lot of people don't want to fix the problem because it keeps them all close together. There are structural differences between their brain and a normal brain. And, you know, we, we don't have a lot of, of babies that commit suicide, so we don't know if some of those structural differences are there at birth. But you, I mean, brain tissue takes a while to change. That's why learning isn't instantaneous. So if you have somebody with these severe structural differences in their brains, and there's also differences in how they uptake and, and regulate certain neurotransmitters. So there's structural and chemical differences in the brains of someone who commits suicide. You did you not go. do this. It is not possible for you to do this. Basically, as far as I can tell from the neurobiology on this, if somebody is predisposed to this, there can be a triggering event where they're just like, this is the thing, but it was going to happen. It's sort of like um, if you have a heart defect, you could be out for a jog and that triggers the heart defect and you're gone. You could be having sex. You could be, you could have heartburn and be eating a pizza. It's going to happen, mm. or it's really, really likely to happen. Um, <clears throat> these things can get worse with age. Not so much the structural differences, but the neurotransmitter differences. So if you've got mm. somebody who's you know, slightly crazy and manipulative, but, and they've been threatening suicide for years and never really followed through anything, it was just a pl ploy for attention, and then they actually follow through with it, odds are um, there was some sort of neurotransmitter issue that got worse with age that contributed to this. So even if you dumped the guy... You did not make him commit suicide. Even if you took the, the, their grandchildren out of their life, you did not make them commit suicide. People with healthy brains don't commit suicide. And you cannot change somebody's brain from a healthy brain to an unhealthy brain. Not without like hitting them in the head a bunch of times with a cricket bat or something. Like It takes severe trauma to I mean, I was in a car accident. I was stopped at a red light. Dude hit me at 75 miles an hour oh. or more. It was 75 to 85. He was speeding on a, a highway that happens to have some red lights on it. Um, and I had a traumatic brain injury and it changed my personality for a while. I had all sorts of issues. But that was a serious car accident where I could have been killed. And I, you know, eight months later, I'm pretty much back to normal as far as personality and, and, and everything else goes. So, um,. It, you know, if, like I said, either way, and, and some people will, like, threaten suicide if their kids don't do the dishes. That is shitty. That is super manipulative. That yeah. is a, emotionally abusive. That is, like, that's not normal parenting. Yeah. Don't my nails look great? <laughs> um, so if, if you have that going on and you're in that sort of situation, you didn't do anything wrong. And the only thing to do is to get that person professional help. And if it's a manipulation yeah. ploy, they'll knock it the fuck off because 72-hour holds aren't fun. And if it's a um, if it's serious, then they'll get the help that they need, which cannot come from a family member or a close friend. You, it can't. You have to have professional distance in order to be able to help these people. So, and a sh you know, you see, you see these people dilly dallying around, and you you just ask yourself, like, where's their brains? Honestly, and it becomes tiring. This is part of the reason why I got out of ministry. I couldn't take, I could not take a lot of the manipulation going on and people not wanting to just get to the root cause and fixing things and ah. Oh. Shitload of training, like master's degree minimum, like fucking, you can't pick this up off of Google in an afternoon no, to help somebody right. who has suicidal ideation. Yeah. So I hope that's helpful for somebody. And I'll see y'all later, bye.
that was 100% helpful because it gets to the crux. You've got to ring 911. You've got to, well, in Australia, we ring um, 000. And do it, guys. Don't let these people waste time and muck you around. Um, so, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist on the Pro Bricky Exclusive YouTube channel. Bye for now.